And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical weather bulletin for August the 14th. Two tropical cyclones active on day 227 of the year. Tropical storm Josephine is uh, having a nice little merry journey through the central Atlantic and tropical depression 10 will also stay out to sea. We've also marked three other areas in the Atlantic for possible development, one of which the National Hurricane Center also has on its books, a 30% emerging off the US East Coast, another one will follow behind it and a 20% chance for another wave behind Josephine. Day 92 in the Eastern Pacific and we've got three other areas of interest there as well. Two of them at a high chance, 80%. The second one further east could become a significant hurricane which models have backed for some time. In the Western Pacific it's all simmering down again. There is a small chance of development in the next five days of a little system out at sea but we're not even marking it tonight at least. And in the North Indian Ocean there are no systems active at this point in time in this basin either. So. The eastern basins are rather quiet now. Well, let's take a look at Josephine right now. 45 mile an hour winds, pressure of 1,007 millibars. Can't be discounted completely, certainly for the, um, the Lesser Antilles, 638 miles east-northeast of Barbados right now. And it hasn't completely cleared the islands just yet, but we expect that the storm will do in the next 48 hours. It shouldn't have any effects on land. Uh, keyword there shouldn't and then it will move up towards the north there curving towards the northeast and could affect Bermuda as a weak tropical depression on day five uh, some movement in that forecast that could change and you can see it quite clearly on the imagery here it's certainly a bona fide tropical storm you can see it there um, continuing towards a west northwesterly direction blowing up a good amount of convection um, decent winds by the looks of things ascat uh, caught the 40 to 45 mile an hour winds i think recon also got the observations that allowed the national hurricane center to upgrade the storm in the Gulf of Mexico, general thunderstorm activity, nothing over sea. The eastern Pacific, you can see some rotation there off the coast of Mexico. The tropical depression towards the left-hand side of your picture. The remnants of Elida right up towards the uh, northwest there. But that circulation near Mexico, that's a high chance, 80% on our numbers, 90% from the National Hurricane Center. And another area there over Central America, right on the far edge, right-hand side, which might become the next system. Western Pacific then looking fairly quiet. You can see the bare, very bare, hardly anything of it, remnants of 6W uh, over the southernmost Japanese islands by now in the Ryukyu Island chain. Nothing of it really at this point. A few uh, monsoonal blow-ups over Vietnam and uh, southern China, but really nothing else to talk about. The South Pacific looking rather quiet as well. Usual winter pattern here, a few flare-ups in the tropical zone and what looks like a frontal system pushing through Queensland, Australia. The Indian Ocean, again looking very monsoonal, which you'd expect at this time of year in August. September, October is when it really comes back again for the tropical zones, um, but a lot of rainfall, no doubt. Sea surface temperatures then are fairly warm, 30 degrees pushing higher than that off the coast of Mexico. That's the area to watch for potential development. Of course, that's where the land is, the biggest land threat potential for the eastern Pacific in what is a fairly bare ocean, it has to be said. The Atlantic though, the Gulf of Mexico, piping hot, it has to be said, 30 degrees plus off the coast of Cuba, even 32 in one or two locations. But really, all the way up to the outer banks of North Carolina, it is prime real estate for these tropical cyclones and Josephine is the next one moving through now. In the Indian Ocean, uh, 30 degrees in a few areas off the, uh, the coast of India, the Indian continent there. Um, and looking at the Western Pacific, the warmest part of the ocean, probably in the Gulf of Tonkin. But really, storms won't be too fussed where they form in this basin because 30 degree waters pretty much extending all the way up to the southern Japanese islands and a good pocket of... 28 degrees off the coast of China as well in the East China Sea, South China Sea also very hot. Huge areas of sea there that are ready for significant tropical cyclones. We've still got the La Nina influence there. You can see the blue area like a dagger really through the equator. Um, and the Atlantic still generally well above average, although one or two little cool spots were Isaias and also were Hannah Tract a few weeks ago. Still evident there on that imagery. So this is Josephine now, uh, a close-up of this storm. Not too much to tell you about it really, but a good 
good burst of convection that's just blown up there as night has fallen. Uh, you can see it there in the very last few frames. It's been blowing up very nicely. We are running a live stream where you can see the latest imagery of Josephine on our YouTube channel. It's a pilot um, little thing that we're doing. First time we've done anything like that. So do let us know if you think that's any good. Here's the infrared imagery as well. You can see there much more clearly how that's been blowing up recently in the latest frames. What you will notice on the edge of the convection, it's very sharp to the south. That's a sign of wind shear encroaching upon the storm there. So it is going to have a troubled time over the next few days. And that's why the National Hurricane Center aren't expecting the storm to be particularly strong. I think they're still going with a maximum intensity of 60 miles per hour or thereabouts. Here's what the models say. So there we are, uh, 60 miles an hour, the general consensus. A few of them hedging it up there near hurricane strength, the HMON at 70 miles per hour. Uh, wind shear is actually rather low according to the models at the moment, but it will rise in the next few days. So if it's struggling already, then it's really going to have a hard time. Sea surface temperatures will rise though, which will offset that just a little bit, not too much. Relative humidity is staying around average. But as you saw there on the tracks, it will stay away from the islands. On August the 14th, 1956, two Category 3 storms existed on either side of the world. Hurricane Betsy was moving through the Bahamas after it piled into Puerto Rico. There's an image of it there near Puerto Rico. And Typhoon Babs was moving through the uh, Western Pacific, about to enter through to the East China Sea through the Ryukyu Islands. Tropical Depression 8B had also formed off the coast of India in the Bay of Bengal, and it would make landfall in a couple of days. And that was 1956. Josephine and 10E, the active storms. Code green on our Tico scale from the last storms that we had. These haven't registered just yet. But the next name on the Atlantic Hurricane Seasons naming list is Kyle. We've had 10 already, by the way. Usually we're celebrating three by now. In the Eastern Pacific, the next name on the list is Fausto. In the Western Pacific, the next name on the list is Higos, followed by Bavi. In the North Indian Ocean, the next name on list one is Gatti. And 2015 vibes there in the Western Pacific as well, for those who remember that far back. I certainly do. And in the Australian region, when we get the next storm name, it's Imogen. The Southwest Indian Ocean starts off with Alicia, followed by Mongoyo. And in the South Pacific, the next name on the list is Yolanda. We'll have another Tropical Weather Bulletin tomorrow night. You can track Josephine live with satellite imagery on our YouTube channel at any time. Check out our new look cyclone tracker on the Force 13 website for the latest up-to-date information. You can also find us, of course, on our YouTube channel, search Force 13, and also on Facebook and Twitter, Force 13 at Force 13 on Twitter for the latest updates. You can also help the project become even better by becoming an ultimate fan on YouTube. To see the full list of Ultimate Fan Benefits and to join, visit youtube.com forward slash force13 slash join. With a special thanks to our top supporters this month. You can also check out our growing merch store so you can show Force13's colours wherever you go. You can also find a link to our Discord server underneath this video in the description.